and against sixth abstention. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members, that is, those returned by FC and those by GC who are present. I declare the motion passed. Debate on motions with no legislative effect. The motion debate on establishing a universal retirement protection system. Members who wish to speak on the motion will please press the request to speak button. I'll now call upon Mr. Lang Kuo-hung to speak and move the motion. But before Mr. Lang Kuo-hung speaks, I would like to ask you to take away the largest placard that uh, you are showing because you are blocking my line of vision. I can't see you and I can't hear what you say. Not to worry, Mr. President, I can uh, hold it up. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, just now the motion ha was passed. That is for the government to reform outdated legislation and promote the development of innovation technology. I uh, voted against it in vain. I hope that this motion moved by me will face the same fate. That is, there might be members voting against it, but at the end of the day, it will pass. I think that the uh, DAB's proposed amendments and the FTU's amendments are outrageous. I hope that they, whether I hope they consider whether um, there are enough votes to pass the uh, motion. And uh, for the uh, members proposing amendments, I'm not going to give a long speech, so stay here, Mr. President. When I filibustered during the budget debate, I said the following. I said, Mr. President, the elderly people could not make their ends meet and they did not live a good retirement life and that's of course a tragedy. What about the majority of our society? Allowing them to continue to live in this plight, this is an even greater tragedy and this tragedy has continued for another three years. Mrs. Carrie Lam has come here saying that she would like to uh, communicate with us, and I can tell her four things. We must have sympathy. We must have uh, the sense of shame. We also need to be discerning. Well, by having um, empathy, where that means when you under when you see that somebody is uh, facing a plight, you must uh, help them, just like saving a child from falling down a well. And that shows uh, that that also um, means a sense of shame. If you are not able to do it, then you should uh, you should just leave. If you're unable to do anything about it, you will feel uneased. And you need to have kindness. For government officials, if you're unable to help the elderly, then you should leave your post. And you should also be discerning. You should know the right from wrong. Mr. President, I don't intend to continue because I'll save time um, for the uh, my response to uh, member speeches at the end of the debate. But I want to say that I don't have the so-called enemies. I hope that for all the amendments proposed to my motion, apart from the amendment of the D, uh, proposed by the DAB, all other amendments can be passed because I don't mind if uh, other amendments are passed or not. I'm going to stop speaking now. I'm going to respond later. And I propose the question to you that the motion moved by Honorable Lang Kuo be passed. Three members will move amendments to this motion. This council will conduct a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. I will call upon Honorable Members who have moved the who moved the amendments to speak in the following order. Honorable Lang Chi Cheng, Honorable Kuo Wai Kang, Honorable Evan Young, but they may not move amendments at this stage. Honorable Lang Chi Cheng. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Retirement is an issue that we have had a long debate. I joined the Let's Go in 2010 or 2012. For five years, uh, we have had a lot of heated arguments about retirement. This is because the society is aging. Uh, the poor elderly is increasing in number. There were but 900,000 people who were aged 65 or above five years ago. Now it is 1.17 million. Many elderly people don't have work, they don't have an income, they become poor. Um, the Commission on Poverty issued a report last year. The number is uh, 300,000. And the latest uh, Gini coefficient is 0 0.539. I think it has a lot to do with more elderly people uh, who are poor. I don't want to talk about whether the uh, assets of the elderly um, are known or not. We are supposed to be an affluent city. We are supposed to be an economically advanced city, and yet we have to live with this uh, picture of uh, so much poverty. It is upsetting. We want to talk about why the poor elderly are having such a hardship. I think we need to look at the question of the MPF contributions. We want to uh, scrap the offsetting arrangements without weakening the MPF system. My colleagues will elaborate on that. But then MPF can only cover uh, the working population. For those who don't work, they are not covered. And then for the elderly employees, they only have a short period of time to contribute. Therefore, the MPF cannot really help much. In addition, for the MPF system, the contribution rate is but 5%. To many people, this is uh, just a small sum of money, and you can't achieve much, uh, though you won't, of course, give it up. And therefore, whenever we talk about a universal retirement protection scheme, the, uh, emotions run high, and we all expect uh, that there will be a better uh, protection. Now, the debate on retirement protection has been going on for a long time. Uh, the academia have also come up with different options. Political parties have also joined the debate. The government has been responding to our suggestions, and through the Commission on Poverty, the government has uh, suggested um, that there can be an option to be followed up. But then retirement isn't something for the short term. Retirement is important. Retirement is also a complicated public policy issue. It doesn't just uh, affect uh, it doesn't just affect the current generation. It will also have far-reaching uh, repercussions. Therefore, the government must uh, think carefully, and the government must be cautious. This is understandable. We believe that for an ideal retirement protection system, it should be universal. Everybody should benefit, irrespective of the kind of work that the elderly uh, population uh, have worked and irrespective of the social class, they should be taken care of in their elderly years. And this is a way to show the government's commitment towards the elderly. Therefore, the DAB has always advocated that we need to have a universal retirement protection system. We mustn't allow anybody to be left out. And as to the idea of having a uniform rate of payment, can this serve the purpose of helping the poor elderly? Well, we may have a retiree living on the rental income of a few properties. They can go overseas for holiday every year, while others can only live on a shoestring budget, or they only make a living out of their OH allowance or the OH living allowance. According to the SWD, we have got 400,000 such senior citizens, accounting for half of our elderly population. 
for a uniform payment rate for those who live on the rent income, uh, rental income of a few properties, um, the uh, pension will be uh, good enough for a few meals. But if we start to uh, have differential rates, then it means that perhaps we transfer one or two thousand dollars from a rich elderly person to a poor elder. And that would help a lot, and that extra two thousand dollars will be very meaningful. Therefore, it should be on a need basis. Those who are more needy should get more. For a uniform payment rate, if you are indiscriminate and if you give the same amount of payment to everybody, irrespective of the need, for a DAB. On the one hand, we want to help the poor, and we insist that uh, we need to spend our money wisely. We always have this question mark. That is, if we pay the same regardless of uh, being rich or poor, it also begs the question as to the right amount of money to be given out. And then the actual needs as well as the quality of life expected would differ from one to another. It would be difficult to draw the right line. So it is indeed uh, something that is not easy to decide on. Our resources are not unlimited, whether we give um, the pension on a need basis, or whether we give the same amount regardless of the means. Uh, I think it is a matter of importance that we look at the question of financing. Now, um, many options have been suggested. Uh, I think it all boils down to um, reforming the MPF system as well as our tax uh, regime. It will be complicated. I believe that to the new term government, it is going to be a major challenge. I suggest that we should think out of the box. We should balance uh, the different views received, and then we should implement the policy. For the DB, we believe that we need to improve upon the initiatives announced in the policy address this year concerning the elderly, and then we improve upon them, and then we can help the elderly people. Say, for example, for the uh, old age living allowance, we should have a higher tier of assistance, so that elderly people who have a small amount of savings for their final days uh, will not be discouraged from using the money lightly. We believe that by having a higher tier of assistance, uh, they can sort of be given some help so that they don't have to um, be so uh, tight in their uh, money. But then the asset uh, limit is only $144,000. I think we are being too harsh. And from our contacts with the elderly people, they hope that the asset limit can be raised to at least $300,000. And then for the OALA, it is said that um, it will be relaxed um, from $329,000. It is still inadequate. We suggest that the asset limit should be enhanced to $800,000. And then for the OH allowance, again, the system should be reformed. It should be non-means tested. It should be non-income tested. That is, whoever reaches the age of 65, he should be entitled to the OAA. Um, I think the financial means should be the basis for determining the amount of assistance to be received. Um, by adjusting the OALA as well as the OAA, I think everybody can be covered, and we believe that for the um, higher tier of assistance for OALA, it should be relaxed to $300,000, much more than $200,000. And then for the 400,000 people who are drawing the OALA will benefit. Other support measures should be enhanced as well, so that the uh, elders will be given the help that they need. So I speak. Thank you. Mr. Chief, 
本人咧過去呢一年咧 ，Mr. Kuo Wei Kang， I、uh, in the past year was the chairman on、uh, on retire on the subcommittee、uh, of the subcommittee on retirement protection. We have a have a number of meetings and a, a number of、uh, public hearings to listen to views of、uh, stakeholders.、Uh, there's a common thread、uh, of、uh, opinion that is that、uh, we want to have a universal retirement protection. And unfortunately, after the consultation was conducted by the government, and、uh, at the end of 2016, when the government came to brief us, that、uh, there was no pro、uh, proposal, specific proposal, for us to consider, and、uh, people are under the impression that this is a delaying tactic. And we did look at、uh, the、uh, financial financing options. And also the、uh, initiatives in the policy address, such as a higher tier of、uh, OALA, and also with、uh, we are not sure without the first pillar, and that is a public social benefit.、Uh, is it that the government will never consider this when the、uh, World Bank talk about five pillars?、Uh, the government will keeps talking about just four of them. So are we not?、Uh, are we therefore not able to catch up with the rest of the world? Every time when we talk about retire retirement protection, people would describe certain scenarios: an elderly woman uh, uh, scavenging a paper, discarded、uh, cup, discard discarded placards and、uh, and paper and、uh, and some.、Uh, Housewives who would、uh, try to buy ch cheaper food at the close of the market, and then、uh, some would、uh, stay at home in order to save money.、Uh, these these are cases involving elderly people. The FTU started to、uh, strive for retirement protection many years ago because of without retirement protection. Uh, people can fall easily to、uh, fallen into、uh, the poverty trap. We have been moving in circles for many years. We have wasted a lot of time. In the 1980s,、uh, we we failed to introduce the OH pension, and then、uh, in the 90s,、uh, we we had the discussion on MPF. We knew that the, the MPF system、uh, was problematic. Housewives、uh, would not be protected because、uh, there is no employment relationship, and the、uh, management fee is was is high, thus eroding the benefits. But if we didn't accept it, then there's even then it's even worse. And now we know that the problems are real. The the,、um, the MPF.、Uh, Returns are eroded by management fees, and、uh, this is certainly not a good value for money. To enable everyone to be entitled to retirement protection,、uh, the FTU has been striving for universal retirement protection system. Hong Kong is wealthy, and it's because、uh, the hard work of the、uh, older generation now. Our fiscal reserve、uh, stands at the nine hundred billion dollars, but the elderly poverty rate has、uh, gone up instead of down,、uh, according to Oxfam's、uh, report published last year.、Uh, elderly people in poverty in twenty sixteen increased from twenty eight two hundred eighty seven thousand five hundred to the. For three hundred seventy-two, three hundred thirty-two, uh, five hundred in April last year. So, uh, while our public coffers are flooded up with money, the、uh, we have more and more elderly in、uh, poverty. The government sh is only competent if it can、uh, effectively redistribute wealth. Therefore, the FTU would like to deploy a sum of money which was、uh, ear、uh, earmarked as before the.、Uh, Reunification as the、uh, seed money. That's the、uh, land fund、uh, with the sum of two、uh, hundred billion dollars. 
FTEU would like to uh, redeploy this um, fund for retirement protection, but the FS try to uh, deploy it to uh, for another purpose. That is the future fund, uh, so that we cannot use it for retirement protection. The former FS uh, has this uh, mentality: the well, the elderly people's livelihoods should not be protected. Uh, but the fiscals uh, should be hoarded away the, as much as possible. But FTU thinks that uh, the money should best be spent on uh, our elderly people because uh, the, the two hundred billion dollars uh, was uh, generated by the hard work when they w there was no minimum wage, and then the uh, businesses of Thrives and make the profits, and they pay tax to the government, and that's why we have the two hundred billion dollars. Without universal retirement protection, these elderly people will be still be in poverty. The government should provide the money to to should give the money back to them. They are the stakeholders of uh, this uh, sum of uh, two hundred billion dollars. There are many tiers in the current retirement protection. The poorest would get the CSSA. Those with a better financial position would get the higher tier OALA or uh, OAA. Sometimes a means test and a asset declaration would be required. If you don't want to go through a, a means test, then you have to wait until you're seventy, and you get a thousand dollars in OAA. Many. Many the elderly uh, people shy away from uh, an asset uh, test because uh, they have got some money which they would use for their last years, and they may not be able, they may not be willing to spend their savings because uh, they don't know when they will need it for uh, for health care. So uh, these people would uh, rather remain poor instead of applying for bad, such these benefits. I think uh, we, we must do away with the means test and asset uh, limits, so that uh, the elderly people would be uh, sure that they would be treated uh, fairly in getting the uh, benefits. So we would like to have uh, something over on top of the MPF, so, so every elderly person would get uh, three thousand five hundred dollars per month, even though even though they may not be covered by uh, MPF. And for example, housewives we would be able to get it, and uh, we we'll like the Commission on Poverty to continue with the discussion on uh, introducing a universal protection reti uh, retirement protection system, because uh, the, uh, people from uh, different uh, walks of life are represented on the Commission, and it would be the most appropriate venue to continue with the discussion. On the premise that the government is willing to talk about how it can, the system can be financed, whether it's uh, done by the Commission on Poverty or as the original motion suggests, uh, we should set up another mechanism. What it what is required is the change of mentality of the by the government. If the government doesn't want to do this, uh, then uh, whatever mechanism we introduce will not be. Sufficient, and then we we'll end up with having piecemeal solutions, and elderly people will not be protected fully. Mr. Elvin Yeo. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I thank Mr. Lang Kwa Hong for moving this motion. And in terms of the non means tested universal retirement protection system, the Civic Party has. Since its establishment, been supporting this idea, and today is no exception. About the universal retirement protection system <coughs> proposed by a, a professional, Mr. Jeremy Tam, a fellow party member, will be speaking on it soon. In the last administration, Professor Nelson Chow compiled a report on the universal retirement protection system, and we believe that this has formed the basis for the government to take. Forward the idea of um, a non means tested universal retirement protection system. I don't know whether under the uh, 
leader of uh, Professor Lao Chi Kuang. Uh, this will be taken up by this administration. We can take another perspective today. In terms of universal retirement protection, it it is perceived as a burden on the public coffers to take care of our elderly people, but this may not necessarily be the case. Let's take a look at the silver hair market. Perhaps we can have some new thinking. According to the um, survey report on Hong Kong silver hair market conducted by the Hong Kong Council of Social, Social Services, Many elderly re people responded that uh, if they have universal retirement protection, it, they will be more active in participating in the silver hair market. Although we may not have a, a well-established senior uh, citizen market compare, comparing to uh, Singapore or Japan, we need to understand why. Many elderly people may have assets what they don't have. Uh, what they don't have um, is cash, and as pointed out by other members, in such circumstances, many elderly people are worried about spending their money. So according to this report, whether or not elderly people have assets or cash, they tend not to squander the money away because they face um, huge pressure as far as the health care is concerned. So at least for fifty percent of the elderly respondents, if these elderly people have money, they would best opt for um health care products. So if we have comprehensive health health care for the elderly people, we can then incorporate um a lot of people in the workforce and provide jobs for them. So it's a win-win solution with a comprehensive universal retirement protection system. These elderly people will be willing to spend more, and that will boost the economy, and that we can also develop another industry. And at this juncture, Mr. President, I'd like to take another perspective in discussing the issue today. Apart from the universal um, demogrant, we need to have uh, a comprehensive uh, elderly policy. At the end of the day, we need to ask what uh, we can provide for our elderly people after their retirement. And the answer is simple, quality and dignity. And it involves a macro blueprint of, of uh, elderly policy. And that is also the crux of my amendment. Mr. President, well, of course, in the debate, like Mr. Kwok Waiko mentioned, we must um, not avoid uh, these uh, these cases. And I can also cite the case uh, recently. Uh, I heard about an elderly couple, and uh, the wife suffered from stroke and uh, paral uh, was paralyzed, and uh, the elderly husband was unable to take care of her uh, his wife so he killed his wife and then uh, surrendered himself to the police and we can't help but to reflect on what we can help what we can do to help these elderly couple, uh, people and uh, residential care is of course essential and this is of course uh, something very familiar to the uh, Secretary, and I believe that the administration would be able to come up with a good solution. Twenty years ago, the former chief executive uh, made an assessment on uh, elderly care, but uh, it may no longer apply nowadays. In 1997, C.H. Tong, the former chief executive, talked about uh, adequate places for community care and residential care for the elderly so that. Uh, so that uh, the elderly people can age in place and also have a sense of belonging. But nowadays, they no, these no longer apply. Apart from community care and uh, care home places, there are other things we need to consider. There may be a stronger demand for um, elderly care in the community, and we may think that uh, it's more appropriate for elderly people to age in place. Well, of course, residential care home places 
are important. But this is not the hard uh, indicator. We should not only pursue hardware development, we should also consider how appropriate care can be provided to the elderly in the community. And this is uh, the issue facing us. And this is exactly the blueprint I am referring to, Mr. President. We're talking about the strategy at the macro level to provide care for our elderly. And I'd like to talk about the three things to safeguard the health of elderly people. When I got in touch with some social organizations, they said that uh, they have um, organized uh, courses about li life and death, and they would like to educate the public. And for elderly people who are better off, uh, they would like to... Um, be, they would like to provide um, education for them to um, de deal better with their assets. Uh, for example, um, set, uh, enacting wills and uh, 能力, 例如老退化长者的个人预先安排, and also making arrangements about their health care. Well, people may be familiar with wills, but uh, not so familiar with the uh, second and third points. Uh, for the uh, power of attorney, and uh, this was uh, introduced in 2009, but according to the Law Reforms Commission in 2008, in fact, uh, from uh, during the 16 years after its introduction, only uh, I mean the seven years after its introduction, only 16 and during power of attorney instruments were signed. In fact, the enduring power of attorney means that an elderly person can um, um, delegate power to uh, this uh, power of, uh, this uh, agent to deal with the elderly person's assets when the elderly person becomes terminally ill. And this is uh, one important legal tool that guarantees uh, more care for the elderly people, especially when an elderly person becomes terminally ill. The elderly person's uh, family members may not have sufficient assets to provide adequate care for the elderly people. And Secretary, I think that uh, this enduring power of attorney should be, uh, should be widely publicized because this can provide suitable and timely arrangement for the elderly. As for the uh, default um, med uh, health care instruction for palliative care, uh, this is even less known to the public. This, for this instrument, after it has been signed, there will be a default uh, care plan for the elderly people, so that it is acceptable acceptable by the uh, patients as well as their family members. Having said so much, I'm trying to convince the secretary and members of this council that what we need is not just hardware. Well, of course, we need to have more places, more hospital beds. And uh, of course, we need to have a um, pension fund. And uh, what is more important, apart from this long-term objective, is to adopt a mindset that allows us to uh, take care of the aging population at the wider level. Secretary for Labour and Welfare. President, first of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Lam Kok Hong for moving this motion in the first electoral uh, council meeting of the new, go new government. And on, on top of that, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Lung Chi Cheng, Mr. Kwok Wei Kung, and Mr. Alvin Yeo for moving amendments. Today gives us an important um, opportunity for us to share with you the uh, philosophy of this important issue. Well, 13 years ago, I spoke here in the Let's Go, and 13 years later, once again, I have the opportunity to speak to members. In 20 years' time or so, 
there will be uh, one person out of three who is uh, over 65 years old. I believe that you all agree that um, whilst we meet the challenges brought by an aging population, it is important to give uh, our elderly citizens a comfortable home to spend their, their twilight years. In order to let our elderly citizens uh, to be well taken care of, well, Retirement, retirement protection is an important part. Currently, we have adopted um, the multi-pillar retirement system advocated by the World Bank. These four pillars are Pillar Zero, multi-tier social security system. The um, second pillar, MPF and occupational linked retirement protection. The third pillar, voluntary savings. And the fourth pillar, public services from sub, um, family support and personal asset. They are all shared by um, the, an individual, employer, and the government. Through different uh, channels, we take care of the various needs of elderly citizens. In January this year, the policy address of 2017 announced a series of measures to enhance the retirement protection system, including enhancement of um, the OALA OH living allowance under Pillar Zero by relaxing asset limits and adding a higher tier of assistance for better protection to those with greater economic need, financial need, and the waiver of fees for public health care for all for older OAL recipients and those with financial need, as well as a proposal of details to abolish the offsetting mechanism under the MPF. Bureaus and departments are working together to uh, put in place these measures uh, step by step. This government agrees with the philosophy in relation to retirement protection of um, the last government. That is, we should focus limited resources to those with financial need. In fact, any uh, retirement protection initiatives will have to take into account financial sustainability and in order to avoid bringing a burden to public finances and uh, onto the next generation. In addition, um, elderly citizens have different needs. That depends on their age and physical condition, the family and financial situation. And on top of that, well, there are different needs in relation to social security, health care, and community care service, as well as financial management amongst different uh, elderly people. So I do think that uh, we have to uh, take a comprehensive review. I and mean, I believe that we all agree that there should be an enhancement of our current uh, system to, get, to give elderly citizens better protection. And I will listen to views, and I will give a consolidating reply afterwards. Mr. Michael Tian, I would like to welcome Dr. Law. He has made a comeback after 13 years. Um, the Commission on Poverty issued a report for the sake of public consultation. The chair of the then COP uh, was our incumbent CD. I'm sure uh, we're going to put an end to the argument. Um, I think we all know that um, we need to address the issue, first of all, in principle, whether there should be means testing. Second, if there is to be means testing, where do we draw the line? What is the amount? What is the limit? I think we all agree uh, with um, the fact that this is going to be the cross of the matter. Well, for those who are in support of uh, not having means testing, in other words, the universal retirement protection, the argument is that it is being fair to everybody and the payment will be uniform. But this is a wrong argument. For those who are in support of means testing, they are also emphasizing the need to be fair. Well, I think... Uh, if you want to be fair, in fact, it involves two opposing views, justice vis-a-vis -vis equality. The independent consultant's report has referred to this. Equity and equality are different concepts. I think um, it is still confusing. I would rather use the word justice and equality. 
when I lay on my arguments. I think from the words uh, themselves, uh, you can see a difference. Uh, you see, um, uh, that you can tell the difference. I think, Dr. Law, you are familiar with these two photographs. Let me sort of explain a bit if you haven't considered it. Now, a few uh, children uh, watching the football match uh, from outside the fence. One is taller than the fence, so he can see it in any event. For the other two, they have to uh, stand on a block before they can uh, see the match. Uh, so this is the cross of the matter. According to the principle of justice, the tallest one doesn't need to be helped. For the um, medium one, he needs uh, two boxes and then uh, he needs one box and then for the shortest one, he needs two boxes. According to the principle, being equal, everybody will have one box. The tallest boy don't need it, doesn't need it. For the shortest boy, even with one box, he still won't be able to see the match. Because of this, I'm against the idea of having a universal coverage. I think both options are good. It is a matter of differences in the value judgment. Now, if you go for means testing, it is justice. Non-means testing, it means you go for equality. Therefore, when somebody says that if we support means testing, we are being um, sort of um, we are not compassionate enough. I think it is wrong. I just want to say that when resources are limited, we have to put them to the best use. Some will say that the government is so rich that we can uh, think that as if we have no limits to our resources. I just have to say that I respectfully disagree with such an argument. Even if we have a lot of money, we still need to spend money on other places, um, on other areas like uh, uh, UGC uh, places, uh, dental care, um, places in different sorts of homes for the disadvantaged. Uh, I have a long list to go down, and then we have to look at the question of financing. Now, let me talk about public finance. Do we have uh, surplus uh, forever? Uh, according to the budget, it is said that it is a matter of whether we have got the money. It is a matter of whether we have problems with our revenue. For the past 10 years, there were huge fluctuations in our land sale our revenue. Year 2008-09, $17 billion. In the year 2016-17, over $120 billion. Between 1998 and 2004, we had the financial crisis, the um, uh, internet bubble, etc. And then for five years in a row, we had a, fun, a fiscal deficit. From such information, we can see that uh, there are few characteristics. A lot of fluctuations. Um, the number of taxes is uh, limited. The tax pay is narrow, and the um, predictability is low. So sometimes we may find that we're rich, but another moment we may be uh, poor. So I think it's better to adopt the affordability principle. I think we need to have a more progressive income tax. We should impose a tax on vacant properties, and we should also have a progressive tax on luxury items. In other words, uh, we need to practice justice when it comes to distribution. Uh, we can't, uh, and we need to be fair. Um, now, for the asset limit, the government's uh, proposition is eighty thousand dollars. No one has said that this is a good idea. Uh, at first, I thought that it was not good; it was too cruel. Now, I think that it is indeed very, very harsh. Uh, Doctor Law, I think you have heard me when I spoke at the uh, commission meeting. I think it's better just do something simple. That is to improve the OALA, have it pitched at two hundred and twenty thousand dollars instead of paying twenty four hundred ninety five dollars. It should greatly be enhanced to three thousand eight hundred. I think that would only cover the basic needs. I think it is an urgent task to benefit four hundred forty thousand elders immediately. We don't need to 
incur a single cent of administrative cost. We don't need any extra time. Um, the information is readily available, and we can do it immediately. So, Dr. Law, please um, talk to Mrs. Carol Lam, and please uh, take my idea seriously. Mr. Poon Siu Ping, Mr. President, according to the census and statistics, the, uh, in June, the by census result was announced. And then in 2016, according to household um, statistics, the Gini coefficient was 0 0.539. It is uh, the a historic high for 45 years because we have got mismatches in the income distribution. Another reason is the aging of the population. Uh, there are elders who don't have an income or who have just a uh, small income. Such a, uh, elderly households are growing in number. I'm afraid if we do nothing, the Gini coefficient would just worsen, the wealth gap would just get worse. Si Wai Leung, the former CEO, at the time that he announced his policy address, said that he would not implement the non-means testing universal retirement protection option. He would only focus the resources on those who are needy. I cannot subscribe to his argument. In principle, retirement protection should be a right. For Hong Kong to succeed in such a way, I think it is uh, built on the toy and the hard work of the elderly population. They are no longer young. It is but right for us to uh, give them uh, security in terms of the basic needs. Now, if we have a means testing, it means that we are screening out those who are not eligible. And in effect, it is uh, discouraging um, the um, inclination to save for the rainy days. And it means that we cannot have the uh, third pillar of the, um, of the uh, UN. And in fact, for the COP's report, it is said that more people are in line with the regardless of rich or poor uh, principle. I won't repeat the arguments again. I just hope that the new administration will opt for universal coverage, and we should discuss a feasible uh, arrangement. For the uh, FLU that I represent, we favor a tripartite contribution model. First of all, the government should inject $100 billion as the start-up fund, and then employers and employees will contribute uh, at a fixed rate. In the 2015-16 budget, it was said that $50 billion will be set aside to provide for the um, retirement protection of the elders. Make use of this sum of money and also use extra resources to make sure that we can kickstart the universal retirement protection scheme. Currently, for the MPF systems, which have um, contributions from employers and employees, it is not a scheme that can provide protection to the retirees. Moreover, for the non income earners, as well as the unemployed, uh, they are not included in the uh, coverage of the MPF. Now, according to statistics in 2015, there were as many as 650,000 homemakers. 30% of the population of this group reached the age of 50. Five to 64. Their retirement needs have been overlooked altogether. The FLU made a recommendation. We should start with the minimum wage rate so that part-timers, students, and um, non-economically uh, active uh, people uh, should be given assistance. The minimum wage is currently uh, $34.50, and then we have the standard working hours being pitched as 44 hours. So it means that um, by having a contribution of $303.60 a month, uh, we can provide uh, protection to everybody. I should also com uh, comment on the offsetting arrangements for MPF. I welcome Mrs. Carrie Lam's um, decision to abandon the 
for the stubborn attitude of the previous term government. She will revisit the topic of offsetting uh, mechanisms. I don't think we should allow employee benefits to be lumped together with retirement protection because it is a matter of um, touching our vested uh, benefits. I don't think the government should um, erode um, the labor rights. Hong Kong is a affluent society. We live in a metropolis, but behind the facade of affluence, many elders live in a society in very poor working conditions, uh, long working hours, low income has rendered them um, very um, vulnerable. Uh, I think we do owe them a lot. We need to have universal retirement protection so that the elderly people can enjoy a, a good twilight uh, period in their lives. Dr. Cheng Lai Wan. President. First of all, I'd like to welcome the new secretary who is attending our meeting for the first time, uh, uh, Dr. Law. I hope you will consider our suggestions, uh, which I'm going to sell out in my speech. I've just heard from Mr. Leung Guo Hong that uh, he objects to the uh, innovation and technology development. If our economy doesn't develop, how can we increase our revenue and improve people's livelihood? And now um, he is uh, moving this motion on uh, giving uh, money to everyone. Uh, so isn't he uh, contradicting himself? Mr. Leung proposes to establish a universal, ret protection sy universal retirement protection system. Well, the DAB is uh, in favor of uh, safeguarding the livelihood of uh, our elderly people. However, uh, in respect of the original motion moved by Mr. Leung, uh, Guo Hong and a member moved by Mr. Kwok Wai Kang and uh, Mr. Alvin Yang. Well, the community has uh, very different uh, opinions on uh, a non means tested universal system. There are people who, are, who think that we should not give everyone uh, the same amount, irrespective of need. However rich we may be, uh, but what about one day we run out of money? Would the burden be then passed on to taxpayers? And that's to say uh, the young people, the next generation of young people. So there are voices in the community that uh, we should not do this uh, indiscriminately, according to some economists who, who have come up with uh, some projected projections, if we, if the government give everyone over 65 or 3,230, when we have a population of 6.2 million of elders, the annual expenditure in this regard will be more than $100 billion. And the government will not be able to sustain the uh, Payment and uh, tax increases will be will not be uh, will not be will, will have to be considered. Even Professor Nelson Chow has said that he is find it in, uh, quite uh, impossible to convince uh, young people now that they should pay more tax. Some members would like to have a universal system, which means that everyone will get it. But in respect of my baby fund, which I proposed uh, in the in the motion last month, they would not say yes to that. Actually, a baby fund and a an universal retirement protection system are both a redistribution of wealth 
by the government. Uh, the difference is that, that uh, the benefits uh, is going to be paid to uh, babies or elderly people. In the uh, in the in the opinion of Mr. Leung Ko Hong, everyone should get a benefit under the universal protection uh, system, even if uh, the elder in question is rich. And please stop a while. Those in the public gallery, if you continue to make a noise, there I will have to ask you to leave. Please continue. If the government wants to uh, make sure that uh, the elderly people that would lead a uh, decent uh, living at it so at their, uh, when they are old, why don't we uh, prepare in the early stage uh, in under the uh, babies uh, fun uh, concept. We only need to spend one tenth of, of the amount. We we'll get for elderly uh, retirement protection. We're talking about thirty-eight thousand per year, but uh, it would be just ten percent of that if we establish a fund for our babies and parents can also contribute to towards the fund. And then, uh, then uh, when they reach the age of eighteen, they can use the money uh, for further studies, higher education, or buying a home. And if they don't need the money at that time, it would be put in the MPF later. So, uh, at when they are very retired, they will have a much. Uh, Bigger sums in their MPF account, whether it's a baby fund or a retirement protection scheme. Well, having a retirement protection system would enable elderly people to lead a, a, a better life. But a baby fund will enable all young people to to have an easier life all the way. So why why not? And having a baby fund would also provide incentive to uh, uh, to an, to facilitate uh, the participation of public in uh, formulating our population policy. It will also give uh, people hope. It's a humane policy. It's a bottom up approach. So while we are discussing whether we should have a retirement protection scheme, let's consider the, the need to uh, facilitate our young. people. Uh, people to have a better future. Mr. Martin Neal. President, uh, our community has been arguing this for decades. Uh, when we talk about uh, first talk about the introduction of the OH pension, and then uh, we discussed the MPF. Uh, we have had very heated arguments. And according to the government, uh, the financial viability of a universal system will be uh, questionable and will be depriving the needy elderly people of uh, of benefits they, that they need. And now we are moving in circles and now we want to have, a, we are discussing whether we should have a universal retirement protection system. Well, it's not that uh, there are many, there are changes to the, the underlying factors. It's just a question of uh, whether we sh support populism. Well, I am in all in favor of helping uh, retirees who are in need. But social justice is not the same as social welfare. Of welfareism, this motion uh, uh, is a concoction of different uh, concepts, and it regards a uh, universal retirement protection system as a panacea, uh, disregarding the real uh, world, and it would uh, push Hong Kong down the uh, path of uh, welfareism. It doesn't really mention the uh, high cost that we uh, have to pay. What is the real world, President? 
uh, the population population aging is not a problem unique to Hong Kong. Many countries are facing unprecedented challenges because of the same problem population aging. According to a report published by the World Economic Forum, since the middle of last century, the and uh, the life expectancy of babies born to this year will, will reach a hundred, and the uh, population at the, of uh, those over sixty-five will increase from six hundred billion to two point one billion dollars. At present, every elder is supported by eight working pe people. In the future, this ratio will go down to one to four. If we look at the uh, eight uh, countries with uh, the biggest retirement protection schemes. I think uh, this is that that the shock shortfall in the retirement funds is already uh, seventy trillion dollars, and it would be even bigger if we do not uh, take measures to encourage people to save. World economy uh, will not be able to cope with the uh, expenditure. Inadequate retirement protection is of course a big problem, but in uh, after two thousand eight. Uh, the uh, peaks uh, country European countries uh, face a tremendous problem because of their retirement in part uh, their retirement protection system according to a report uh, the biggest problem of uh, the of Greeks uh, the deficit is uh, retirement and it's a 7.3% in 2010 and even OECD uh, said this is a Fiscal time bomb. Jim Rogers, a, a tycoon, predicts a, a in the future a financial crisis to be triggered by retirement funds, and he was talking about uh, the U.S. The U.S. government. Uh, is uh, still uh, not able to pay the up pay for the uh, shortfall of uh, one trillion dollars or ten percent of the total. Uh, in order to uh, to af to be af to afford the retirement schemes, uh, more taxes will be uh, levied, and uh, as a result, businesses will suffer. The UK in the nineteen seventies is an example. You may increase tax, but uh, you may not increase the revenue. For example. It, in Japan, in 2012, uh, the uh, GST uh, was increased from five percent to ten percent. But in 2014, uh, it was further it was first increased to eight percent. But consumption uh, dropped, and uh, the Japan f was uh, in recession. And now they 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 have deferred a further uh, tax increase. Our MPF has been uh, in place for 10 years. Two million uh, employees have uh, been saving f for their retirement. Of course, we need to take measures to, to improve the uh, problem with management fees. Uh, the last term government has uh, given some the, in, in, uh, the policy direction uh, indications. And uh, this uh, government, this term of government, would uh, also try to seek community consensus. Let's hope that we can talk and then find some solutions which are accept, which is acceptable to all. We have what nine, nine hundred ten thousand um, elderly people on social benefit of some kind, or the take up rate is uh, more than seventy four percent. Uh, Hong Kong is a capitalist society. We attach a lot of importance to self-reliance. That's why we have achieved a, a miracle economically. And Article 105 of the Basic Law says Hong Kong adopts a, a low tax system in the face of aging population. We should uh, do more to maintain our competitive edge uh, instead of going the other way and create a fiscal time bomb for ourselves. We must tell Hong Kong people clearly. The truth behind all the talk. Otherwise, uh, with the introduction of a minimum wage, and we have standard working hours and the universal retirement protection, then we will be uh, having a lot of uh, welfare welfareism initiative. And then suddenly one day we will wake up to the uh, fiscal risk that we will be facing, and that will be too late.
Thank you. Don't find me. Does any other member wish to speak? If not, Mr. Leung Kuo Hong. I've pressed the button, Dr. Priscilla Lau. Mr. President, over the past few years when we discussed the budget, we um, urged our financial secretary to be forward-looking, to be visionary, and the, the initiatives should be feasible. Uh, today, the motion debate is on establishing a universal retirement protection system. We hope this secretary will be forward-looking as well. Don't just think about ne what happens next year or the year after next. We should think what happens to our next generation 20 or 30 years down the road and what um, their position is in terms of universal retirement protection. This is an imminent problem for the uh, baby boom in the 50s and 60s. Many of them are now reaching the retirement, and many of them are senior citizens already. So when it comes to a universal retirement protection system, if the system is improved, then these, uh, this generation I mentioned will benefit as to whom should be eligible for the retirement protection. Let's not forget that uh, elderly people are our assets. This is the Chinese saying. but. Uh, and also, in fact, many elderly people help young couples take care of their children. But how about frail elders or elderly singletons who have retired, who do not receive any income? And I'm not just talking about poor elderly people. Even for elderly people who are in the middle class, immediately after retirement, they become um, deprived of assets because they dare not spend money to see doctors or to spend money to uh, enjoy life. For elderly people who are fortunate enough to have children to look after them, in the family, if the elderly person gets sick, the whole family's uh, mood is affected. And some young family members may give up their jobs to become full-time carers. And I've been told by some government officials that they're exactly facing this issue. And therefore, the, they have given up their jobs to look after the elderly singleton at home. Of course, the universal retirement protection system should cover the whole elderly population. But we also must bear in mind that there is great controversy surrounding the word universal, and many people have reservations about the idea. Perhaps we could set aside our differences and seek common ground. But what does universal mean? Uh, should we adopt the Canadian system? Must we dish out money to everyone? Because it will be unfair to uh, taxpayers and people who are um, making enough money to pay tax. And they do have reservations about it. We believe that uh, the suggestions, uh, some of these suggestions should be supported. For example, uh, we already have an um, established system of uh, some twenty, uh, some uh, two, uh, twenty hundred dollars for each elderly and uh, whether we can build uh, something else on this basis. And as I mentioned just now, many retirees originally in the middle class dare not spend money to even pay for their pre premium for their insurance. And in order to reduce burdens on the children, they'd rather resort to the public health care system. So there should be some tax breaks or the tax deductions for these children uh, who pay insurance premiums for their parents. I've been in the university for many years. And even for retired university lecturers and professors, they don't have uh, much retirement benefit. I know that uh, I know one professor who, uh, whose spouse enjoys uh, medical benefit, and after re immediately after retirement, um, his wife, who is diabetic, would need to go to a public hospital, and the queue is uh, nine months long. 
and uh, I can say that the professor is quite well off. As for other elderly people, maybe they originally are in the middle class, but once they retire, they will face hardship financially. So I think for your long term planning, you should also help these elderly people who aren't really poor. But、uh, who may be retiring in their fifties? Say、uh, he may be a senior citizen、uh, in his fifties, retiring from a discipline service, and we need to look after the physical and the mental well-being of the retiree, and also、uh, to guarantee some kind of income. Now, as for the MPF system. I receive monthly statements, and I won't even bother to read the statements because it's been heavily criticized by everyone already. The administrative fees are so high that、uh, they that uh, that that uh, they've eaten into the contributions. So we cannot rely on the MPF system、uh, for retirement. Even if the offsetting arrangement is cancelled, we still cannot tackle the problem of the growing aging population. That is why we want to have a central pension fund. We can follow Singapore's example. This may be something in the long term because、uh, we have many many vested interests. But we should really review the MPF system. What is its point if the accrued benefits are so little? I think that for senior citizens, well, the BPA has been、um, championing the、uh, job opportunities for senior citizens and for them to be self-employed. In fact, in the budget 2016, the financial secretary said that the business startups are not confined to young entrepreneurs. We can also engage senior citizens. So we should、uh, tell them that they're still capable of、uh, joining the workforce. Uh, so that they can get some income and, in the long term,、uh, reduce the whole society's burden. As for universal retirement protection, I think you should consider giving us some figures. It must not. We should consider long-term commitment before coming up with the figures. I cannot agree with you.、Um, your time is up, Mr. Michael. Look. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Lung Kuo Kong has moved this motion to establish a universal retirement protection system. I think that this is a good in,、uh, move because for retirement protection, we're protecting our elderly people. We're also giving hope and and、uh, security to young people. Uh, in terms of their life in future, at the moment poverty is、uh, very severe in Hong Kong. The、uh, Gini coefficient was zero point five three nine, the highest among advanced city、uh, economies, and、uh, it's also a record high、uh, in Hong Kong. The problem of poverty is so serious, and one of the reasons for that is. Poverty among the elderly, because when elderly people are in their dotage, they have lost a stable job and they do not have a stable source of income. They rely only on government subsidy or perhaps a contribution from their children. And many elderly people live below the poverty line. Now these elderly people have. Contributed their lives to our society, and yet they、uh, really suffer a lot、uh, after retirement. They need to、uh, be. be they, they, some of them become scavengers, and some of them、um, uh, face uh, different uh, hardships. Well, I want to point out that in terms of our welfare spending, the government. Does have some commitment. For example, the total spending has increased by seventy percent, and we also have the higher tier of old age allow higher rate old age allowance. And in the last administration, the old age living allowance was introduced along with the、uh, poverty line. But we should consider whether retirement protection is welfare or is or is it policy. Since secretary is here, I'd like to.、Um, Say this to the secretary. It is an elderly person's right to enjoy retirement protection, so that the, an elderly person can have a dignified life after retirement. In Mr. Lung Kuo Kong's original motion, one of the suggestions is to enhance the MPF system. We believe that this is an important issue. 
and an imminent one, we need to improve the MPL system. And one way to do it is to do it as soon as possible. And I say it three times. Cancel the offsetting arrangement as soon as possible. You must do it as soon as possible. I need to say it three times. And the government has actually taken this up towards the end of the last administration. The um, extensive consultation was conducted, but then the labor sector does not agree to the idea of reducing the uh, ratio of the SPLSP entitlement in order to um, have the offsetting arrangement cancelled. And yesterday, Mrs. Carrie Lam in the question and answer session also mentioned that uh, all the views collected would be reconsidered, but there must not be any delay. The administration uh, may be uh, making a greater commitment, but still, I think the business the, the business sector should also sh shoulder the burden as well, because the public has no confidence in the MPF system. The MPF system has lost its objective or the function uh, as uh, one of the retirement protection pillars, and last year. Thirty billion dollars were used in offsetting in the offsetting arrangement, and and the money um, was used uh, as contingency provision for the purpose of offsetting. And one other criticism people usually have um, towards the MPF system is the high administrative fees. One reason is that it's not fully portable. And is indirectly related to the issue of offsetting arrangement, because um, the money has to be locked with the employee's contribution account. As long as uh, the offsetting arrangement is not cancelled, we can't have full portability of the MPF accrued benefits, and that is why the government should show more determination and commitment. To tackle the issue of the offsetting arrangement, the administration should come up with a proposal that can really safeguard the interest of the labor sector and something that uh, we can accept. Because after all, the majority of society um, are employees, so the labor sector represents the interest of the majority of the public, and even. If employers are required to pay MPF contributions, we're talking about less than 0.4% of the labor cost every year. I understand that as the business sector is paying a um, record high rate of profits, uh, record high profits tax to the government now, or we believe that the business sector has the means to absorb it. Not to mention that there will be transitional measures and other measures to tie the business sector over the difficulties. I appeal to the business sector once again to make more commitment and uh, take another step towards cancelling the MPF offsetting arrangement. Please don't uh, digress and please don't go off the track and try to confuse us uh, and play the delay tactic. In abolishing the MPF offsetting mechanism. Finally, I'd like to talk about universal. Re or, or I'd like to talk about retirement protection. Sometimes, well, the FTU supports non-means-tested retirement protection. Some people may um, put uh, retirement protection against long-term uh, infrastructural investment in government projects. I don't think that these two are contradictory or mutually exclusive. In order to have long-term economic development, we need to have a long-term economic drive. We need to strike a balance. Your time is up. Mr. Shukachun. Thank you, Mr. President. I also thank Mr. Long Kok Kong for moving this motion on establishing a universal retirement protection system. This motion tells us that uh, the controversy of retirement protection has not stopped. 
and neither has uh, the controversy of universal retirement protection um, ended although the administration told us that uh, the controversy has ended. For people who have been fighting for universal retirement protection, this is not a full stop, it's an exclamation mark. Mr. Lo Chi Kong, you are uh, a teacher in the social welfare uh, department of the university. You're a member of the uh, Commission on Poverty. You are also a member of the uh, Community Care Fund. Today, for the first time, you come here as the Secretary for Labor and Welfare to respond to our motion on Universal Retirement Protection System. I do think that um, is destiny. I should call you Secretary instead of CK. When it comes to education and work of uh, the LegCo, you are um, my predecessor. I said to journalists that you are an able person. You have a very well-developed uh, left brain, and I hope that your right brain will be equally developed because left brain uh, is about logic and um, computation. The left brain controls the right side of your body so that you can read very clearly and to understand words. But now we have entered an era of right brain, that is, empathy, um, experience, s sense of design, to control the left side of your body, to read between the lines. When it comes to empathy, Mr. Law, I would elaborate. Working from um, living from hand to mouth. Have you any experience? In Hong Kong, people don't starve to death, but a lot of grassroots are worried about putting food on the table for the next meal. In 2014, uh, Hong Kong U and uh, Hong Kong CSS conducted a study, and it found that over 36,000 people in Hong Kong cannot uh, eat three meals. Every day they live in fear. One of the people are uh, poor elderly people, and it has excluded a lot of hidden cases. I have come into contact with a lot of elderly people. Some of them would uh, s would uh, well make three meals out of one, and they will wait till the evening to buy. Um, bargain vegetables, and they want to save maybe ten dollars to pick uh, leftover and discarded food. Some elderly people would uh, um, choose bone, uh, bones, pork bones, uh, so that it, they can uh, make more out of it. When they go to fast food shop or food court in um, Dragon Center, I think um, you can see elderly people um, eating leftover of other people, and they will pay attention to free meals, soup kitchen. Don't think it's an easy task, because in order to save $30, they will have to wait in rain or under fierce sun for four to five hours. Mr. Law, what would you spend? Uh, what would make you spend four to five hours in the rain and under a fierce sun to do? It may only be thirty dollars, but in every district, about a thousand or several hundred elderly people will spend that much time exposed to the elements just to save thirty dollars. There is a group of elderly people who are more proactive. They would wait outside MTR entrances to wait for free newspapers to scavenge in back alleys. I've come, I've come across a 93-year-old uh, woman who would um, push a trolley of cartons from Shengshou to Fanling to sell to a recycler. 
It would take her an additional one hour. She would have to push a trolley, difficult to control, uphill and cross the road is very dangerous. Is this your elderly um, care plan? A lot of Hong Kong people don't want to t get benefit. And some elderly people will uh, feel ashamed to get benefit. They have the uh, Lion Rock spirit. The administration should protect them. But some people still say that, well, if you can work, you should be self-reliant. So these people, instead of asking for help, try to work. A 90-year-old cleaner worked as an outsourced cleaning worker. She's frail. She go through bins to see what she can scavenge. When you have this in your mind, how would you feel, Secretary? I would like to say sorry to the old lady because uh, we have owed them a lot. This 90-year-old lady, sh should I try to help her find a job with a minimum wage or should I feel sorry for her? Well, she can't lead a normal life. Some people might say, well, it's good she's still active. Is this an elderly abuse uh, care plan or uh, elderly care plan? I will submit. Mr. Frankie Yick, to care for our elderly uh, citizens, people concerned about retirement protection, that's understandable. The Liberal Party asked uh, the administration to put in place retirement protection systems so that when people retire, they will have uh, a decent amount of money to meet to make ends meet. On the 24th of December 2012, in relation to a motion moved by Dr. Fernando Zheng, I said that um, there is no one, there is no country uh, that could uh, launch a universal retirement protection system without uh, adding burden to our posterity. Ret Universal retirement protection involves an uh, astronomical uh, sum of public money. In order to make good use of limited resources, the Liberal Party will definitely not support a non-means test with uniform payment in Universal Retirement protect, uh, Protection uh, System, that is, uh, one that is regardless of rich or poor. Those who are over 60 years old in a few years' time will um, skyrocket. So reliance rate will increase. So retirement protection system uh, that is uh, non-contributory will bring heavy burden. The responsibility of retirement protection is, has been shifted onto the business sector. This is unfair. So the Liberal Party opposed to um, proposals that enforce a further participation of the business sector because a lot of micro and SMEs have already taken up responsibility, um, has already have to pay uh, a large amount towards uh, salary. Well, a means lim uh, asset and income limit can still give a uh, universe. Uh, retirement protection to elderly people. Self-occupied premises are not counted. So a lot of elderly people who have who live in their own home can still maintain the living standard. In relation to the abolition of offsetting mechanism under the MPF, this is, this runs counter to the promise uh, when the MPF was first put in place. So we will not support it. The um, business, uh, the economic analysis and business facilitation unit submitted uh, a paper in relation to business impact on the abolition of offsetting mechanism under the MPF. It says that 2,400 enterprises will, as a result, suffer losses. Uh, the most hard hit sector will be the transport sector. There will be additional expenditure and that, that will be borne by enterprises. This caused uh, tremendous pressure to the operation of, uh, of 
um, businesses. It may cause a wave of closure of micro enterprises and also SMEs. As a result, um, employers will have to be unscrupulous ones, and they will have to first sack employees before the the uh, deadline, and then change the contract to a short term one. Last month, uh, there was a public hearing on the abolition of offsetting mechanism. Some uh, taxis um, uh, trade union said that uh, the call center will be outsourced. This will deteriorate relations uh, between employers and employees. With ripple effect, enterprises will shift uh, cost onto society. That means wherever feasible, they will increase prices. And in the end, this will drive down Hong Kong's competitiveness. Those without the ability to uh, adjust the um, price upwards, they will close down. And in the end, it will be our society that bears the cost. To improve retirement protection, to care for our elderly citizen, the administration should improve various elderly care policies, say, for example, the OALA and provide uh, tax allowances or deductions. Say, for example, uh, parents, grandparents, um, dependent allowances should be, uh, to be, should be increased. And um, the, the limitation of uh, having to live together in the same flat should be relaxed uh, to living in the same residential building or residential estate uh, to encourage uh, children to take care of their parents. Thank you. Mr. Chen Kim Po, thank you, Mr. President. I favor uh, enhancing our retirement protection scheme so that those who are needy should be given help. But I won't agree uh, with the argument that we should give the same um, payment uh, regardless of wealth. I think uh, we need to focus our resources and we use the resources on the needy uh, elders so that they enjoy a higher rate of assistance. I anticipate um, personal attacks when I try to be frank. There are lawmakers uh, who are obsessed uh, in their own world who like to use uh, abusive um, words. I think that they are bound to fail. Some would also start to say that functional constituencies should be scrapped, seeing that we are blocking the elevation of poverty. As you know that most of us are professionals, or we represent different sectors and industries. We have been supporting and driving the economic development of Hong Kong so that we have more money in the public coffers to help the poor. So if you talk about scrapping the FCs, I think you, you are confusing the uh, arguments. I think for filibustering, uh, which is personal rather than um, uh, based on uh, the topic uh, discussed, it means that uh, we'll be dragged and then we won't have money to help the poor. After I've made this uh, remark in a moment, I will foresee uh, vicious attacks against me. Uh, I won't have a chance to respond because I won't have the chance to reply. I hope the relevant uh, lawmaker or makers won't have any illusion that they are in the right. I just want to say that when public finances permit, um, the needy elders should be given a higher rate of assistance. For means testing I, or an asset testing, I think we should be as uh, generous as possible so that the needy will be covered. And the government should assure us that when there is economic growth, the rate of assistance should also uh, be increased, increase, uh, including the non-means tested OH allowance. Um, for the question of uh, offsetting mechanisms of the MPF, I have an open mind. I hope all the stakeholders will um, sit down and talk about it. The previous term government promoted the idea of uh, having a cut-off date, but it wasn't acceptable to employers and employees. We need to start the talks afresh. Now, I know that uh, by scrapping the offsetting mechanism would cause a blow to the SMEs. We need to be cautious. We have to remember one thing. When the MPF scheme was first introduced, the administration did offer the offsetting mechanism in exchange for the support of the employers. So both the employers and employees uh, have their um, 
and point.、Uh, we mustn't get emotional. We should have an holistic view when we think about the matter, so that we have a win-win situation, irrespective of the outcome.、Um, for the、uh, LSP as well as the SP,、um, that should have been offset.、Uh, should no longer be.、Um, Uh, sort of、uh, made available because for businessmen,、um, since、uh, they haven't anticipated the scrapping of the offsetting mechanism,、uh, I don't think we should、um, uh, sort of let them down. If the scrapping of the offsetting mechanism will cause the、um, closure of many SMEs, it would not benefit the workers. For the annuities, I think it is a good idea. And for such a concept,、uh, it will suit the needs of the relatively more wealthy elders. Probably the scale is too small to cope with the demand. The government should expand the scheme. I also suggest that MPF and the public annuities scheme should be linked together, so that the accrued benefits can be drawn from the MPF and to be injected into the annual annuities scheme. Doctor Jiang Chongtai, thank you, Madam Deputy. Let me say this clearly. Politically speaking, I subscribe to the idea of a universal retirement protection scheme. But then we are constrained by our existing policies, so it is arguable, and there are many restrictions. Let me、um, elaborate my point. As far as my political stance is concerned. Universal is the key word, but it doesn't mean that it will be the same for everybody. What it means is that the scheme should be there to enhance and solidify our civic rights as well as our identity. What is being said is that everybody, irrespective of your background, your class, your means, as long as you are a citizen of Hong Kong, as long as you are permanent resident of Hong Kong. Then you will have this responsibility, and at the same time, you will enjoy this right as a citizen. We need to understand the philosophy behind the policy. And back in the 1980s, let me go back to history. At that time,、um, Sir David Trench、uh, would like to have、um, free education, and then. We started to have nine years free education, and that's what we call universal social policy. Under such a policy, everybody will enjoy such a right, and as a result of this policy,、uh, we are, were different from mainland China in a very clear way. So, if you are in support of universal retirement protection, you won't.、Um, Object to the idea of setting up of a baby fund. Now, for the、uh, ret retirement protection, when you have a universal retirement protection scheme, I think we need to think more carefully. Universal is the core of the issue, and it is exactly on this point that members are still unclear. When we talk about being universal, what do we mean? Does it mean the civic rights or Is it something that we are not sure about because we may not know about the size of the elderly population because we are not the master of our own population policies and we don't know about um, the um, problems arising from such a lack of control over population policy. That is, we don't have a say over the hundred and fifty one-way permit holders who come to Hong Kong on a daily basis. Now I'm talking about universal retirement protection, and this is because of this reason that many people are worried. Well,、um, for the baby fund, you talk about your babies, but then for the universal retirement protection scheme, we are not sure whether we are talking about new arrivals. We don't know about their age profiles. We don't know about their needs when they come to live in Hong Kong. So when there are so many uncertainties, how can we convince the current generation to support、uh, the elders who may be、uh, new arrivals? Therefore, I have to emphasize my point. We have to get back 
um, the decision power about 150 one-way permit holders who come to Hong Kong. Now, if it is to be universal, it means that it is regardless of your background and your wealth. Uh, there is one point that would contradict uh, this idea, and there is MPF. MPF means somebody who has the power or the uh, the ability to earn an income, then he will be caught by the MPF. So for anybody who has got um, for a government that uh, knows politics clearly, uh, would not then try to have both. There is both the MPF and universal retirement protection. For me, if you want me to support retirement protection, first of all, we need to scrap the MPF. And thirdly, there is a more specific policy constraint. There's one thing that worries me within the concept of universal retirement protection. Uh, we aren't talking about welfare. We aren't simply talking about um, equality. It is a matter of justice. Now, in Hong Kong, each of us has been contributing. There are housewives, there are people who have contributed, and yet it cannot be um, assessed uh, by the market forces. Well, how can we assure them that when they do retire, they will have a reasonable standard of living in their twilight years? I think this is the uh, perspective outlined by Mr. Michael Tian. And of course, in reality, there is this constraint, and it is found in our tax regime. Well, you do you know why this is going to cause us a, wor uh, a, con a concern? This is because we have no control over our population policy. We cannot anticipate um, the actual population growth in the coming years. So for us to launch universal retirement protection, then there is a point that has become blurred. That is uh, whether it should be regardless of rich or poor. You may think that it is irrelevant. Now we have to highlight the principle of justice, and we want to launch the scheme. And actually, I'm advocating a progressive tax uh, system. The more you can earn, then under the system, you should contribute more. In other words, through universal retirement protection, the government is actually carrying out wealth redistribution. That's why it takes me to my third point about the constraints. The local government hasn't got a long-term vision for our development. We have never thought about our younger generation. They have to think about lots of uncertainties. Say, for example, one day they may not be able to take care of themselves when they grow old. I think uh, the government should take care of that in terms of the long-term plan for governance. Now, for today, if you want me to say yes, there are a few uh, prerequisites. First of all, scrap MPF. Second, we need to have to say over the uh, one-way permit uh, arrivals. Thirdly, a progressive uh, income tax. Uh, Mr. Andrew Wen. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I, a moment ago, Many members spoke, and uh, I, I do have uh, certain feelings uh, towards uh, what they've said. In the 80s, we uh, strive for MPF, and then we established the mandatory MPF uh, system. It was a long and winding road. We aim for the same objective. Uh, but still, uh, it's not uh, achieved, and we want to ensure that everyone is ensure uh, life livelihood when we are old. When we talk about universal, uh, it remains a, a myth. In the real world, in the community, as some members have said, some elderly people are uh, having a hard life. Uh, th some of them have to eat uh, leftover foods in uh, in uh, McDonald's. 
or to uh, get uh, food from the welfare NGOs or to get some assistance from kind-hearted people. I believe uh, the new secretary, the secretary knows about this and he will be saddened by such uh, news. And, uh, in, in particular, what would this do to the self-esteem of uh, other people? Uh, the secretary uh, is a senior to me in many aspects, whether it's uh, in politics or in uh, education. We have about a million elderly people, 300,000, more than 300,000 are in poverty or 30 odd percent. Uh, elderly poverty rate is the twice the normal rate for the rest of the population. So there's no need to argue about uh, about this poverty problem. According to a thematic uh, report from the CNS department in 2016, The Gini coefficient has increased from uh, 0 0.537 to 0 0.539 in four years. So it's moving towards the one, the most extreme case of wealth uh, gap. So we have a serious problem of a uh, wealth gap. Some people would argue that we should not look at this coefficient because maybe all of them have uh, seen improvements and therefore, because uh, they have made improvements, uh, the less uh, uh, wealthy will become uh, relatively poor. Well, this is really the, an unrealistic view divorced from uh, the reality. Because uh, you can see that uh, the many elderly people are having a hand-to-mouth existence there and, and they always find it difficult to have ends meet. The secretary has referred to the five uh, pillars. And uh, there's no need for me to repeat what they are. But I would say, in Hong Kong, all these five pillars are quacked and are insufficient. And that's why in the community, there are loud voices crying out for improvement. For example, as mentioned by some uh, members, we have this pillar of uh, MPF. But MPF is unable to uh, allow us to have a uh, reasonable standard of living. And uh, as uh, Dr. Fasila Leo has said, uh, I did not uh, read the uh, annual reports closely. It seems that um, we're always uh, making losses. And even if uh, we have a, a return, it would be seriously eroded by management fee. Many members in this council may end up having to the, ask for uh, handout, food handouts when they retire. Our secretary is a smart and intelligent person. But the uh, secretary will also understand he's not the only intelligent person in the world. We have an alliance uh, striving for universal retirement protection scheme. I think uh, the secretary uh, knows them. And there's a, a, a proposal backed by <clears throat> 180 uh, scholars uh, in various fields, including social welfare. And these uh, scholars were like, well, the government used to talk about Fifty billion dollars, and now the the seed money amount, the amount of seed money required will be one hundred billion dollars. Notwithstanding that, according to Mrs. Carrie Lam's uh, remark yesterday, problems with money are no real problems. A hundred billion dollars is just a small sum, a small drop. We have uh, so many the white elephant projects, and we're spending uh, so much on those. And then now that everything is blamed on uh, Philip Bustring, I think uh, the government is, the, is, uh, is better at uh, Philip Bustring. We are talking about universal retirement protection and uh, every time they, they would uh, respond by giving you a little bit. 
uh, just like uh, when you're injured, you are given a band aid every time. I hope the government will listen to the views of our community. Uh, Mrs. Kerry Lam said yesterday that he would uh, ask, he would uh, instruct uh, all the bureau secretaries uh, to listen to the real opinion of our people. We have only only got seven minutes uh, for our speech. I cannot really t tell you, uh, re re rehearse all the uh, data. I think the secretary is fully loaded with uh, the, all the data. So apart from uh, making rational calculations based on data, we should also take a hard look at the reality. And I have two ex expectations uh, for, for on you, uh, Secretary. Dr. Lao Siulai, I rise to speak in support of Mr. Leung Ko Hong's motion. And according to many members, I'm going to support the uh, community proposal of 2064. Uh, it's a sustainable uh, option through various financing means according to calculation made by some scholars and it's a well designed. I will explain why this is a, this would be assuring to the elderly and it's uh, financially uh, viable. Why do we need to have a universal protection system? It's about prote protecting the elderly. Many elderly people came to our council in the past couple of days and they said they want to have a to to be to have peace of mind in their twilight years and a universal protection system is not just about providing them for them financially but the peace of mind during their twilight years which is not something you can buy with whatever sum of money if we improve our system we can give them that peace of mind Gini, Gini coefficient is a 0 0.539, so you know that some people are leading a very hard life and elderly people are the most disadvantaged of all groups. They don't have any income and they have to pay for uh, all kinds of uh, things and the rent is uh, increasing all the time. Many elderly women and men do, do, cannot even afford to have three meals a day, as uh, Mr. Xiu Gatun has said. Uh, we those who have visited us recently are uh, 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 cleanse, cleansing workers, and they have told us they they have only got one main meal. And they don't they can't afford to have three meals, so because of the high living costs, and uh, to them, a cup of uh, milk tea costing more than ten dollars is quite beyond uh, reach, quite unaffordable. So do we, can we bear to see that uh, this is the kind of life our elderly people are leading? We do have social security for those uh, at the lowest uh, rock, at the rock bottom of that tier. Why do we want to have a uh, universal protection scheme? Why do we say there should be no means test and asset limits? The government says that we need this because we need to concentrate on helping the poorest of those elderly people. But does it mean that those who are above the poverty line drawn uh, will be will not be will not need uh, assistance? Well, I will be very happy if you pay the poorest uh, ten thousand dollars. Well, now you have to ask them to pass the means test and uh, asset test. And just a few thousand dollars, uh, you are going to provide a higher tier of uh, OALA, and the asset limit is just a few hundred thousands of uh, dollars. Will it be sufficient for you to uh, sustain your uh, la last years? Uh, would that be sufficient for you, Doctor Law? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, even a uh, uh, angioplasty operation will cost you hundreds of dollars. Uh, hundreds of thousands of um, dollars and they would uh, always be worried about the, uh, the, the the dwindling savings and they, sometimes some of they say, would say that they would rather die earlier. If we look at the surveys conducted by the U2 University in 2012, 60% uh, of uh, the elderly uh, surveyed suffer from depression because they have no uh, certainty, they have no uh, 
peace of mind. They don't know how long they can support themselves. Uh, this is what is happening, and in reason, in in uh, and recently, an elderly woman uh, was prosecuted for hawking by selling some cut, cardboard, cardboard uh, paper to the domestic helpers. Why are they uh, scavenging the uh, uh, waste paper for for mega sum? Because it, they don't have sufficient uh, support. And now it's said that we want to have a public annuity scheme. We only help, for example, we only help the poorest of the poor, and uh, the uh, benefit is not sufficient. But for the those who are wealthy, you offer the public annuity, and uh, they they can invest as much as uh, one million dollars in the uh, scheme. I don't know how many millions they will owe before they can afford to invest one million. But for those who are own, who have a a, a, a total asset of uh, just under a million, these people, these elderly people who are supposedly to be uh, above the uh, more poverty line, when they were young, the, the, they just worked very really hard, and the savings uh, that they 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 have accumulated uh, is now the curse of to them because that's the reason why the government would not uh, help them why is it that we want them to want to do this we it's not um, a populist idea to have a universal protection scheme we want our elderly people to have a dignified uh, life in retirement so what has that got to do with uh, their assets because uh, our wealth our economic Development is uh, due to their hard efforts. It the the twenty sixty four is the latest approach that we save up for rainy days, so that the entire arrangement is uh, viable in the road, and so that we have sufficient money to support the scheme when aging population gets serious. Of course, uh, the. Uh, the uh, universal retirement protection scheme is no panacea. I agree with Mr. Martini and Mr. Frankie Yick. We need to have a, a proper elderly support service. Please face up to the fact that in the past decade or so, the government has been shirking away from doing the right thing. So please protect, please uh, support this scheme, so that the elderly population can have a, a decent standard of life because uh, our fiscal reserve uh, can can be attributed to their hard work in the past. Mr. Ray Chen, the CY Leung administration is good at appraising himself and if there is uh, anything good, this is the old age living allowance. Well, it was supposed to be a good initiative because the old age allowance is so meager that we need to have another allowance. If old age allowance is non-means tested, then it serves a similar function as universal retirement protection. The only difference is the amount. In October 2012, CY Leung introduces old age living allowance, OALA, uh, at the amount of $2,500, only that it well, it's, it is means tested. That is why, that is why at the finance committee, uh, Leung Kwok Hong took the lead to Philip Buster, and um, he got in the way. And then, of course, uh, it, when it comes to dishing out money, some people tend to blame the uh, members who filibustered asking why uh, money could not be dished out to the the elderly as soon as possible. But I think that uh, they have misunderstood Leung Kwok Hong because Leung Kwok Hong wanted to have non-means tested OALA. And then the DAB proposed the uh, assets and income limit of uh, $300,000, and then the Liberal Party further proposed a an increased amount, $500,000. And at that time, CY Leung did not heed any such suggestion. Five years on, finally, the amount has been raised to $300,000 as the threshold. 
Now, there are cases in which the couples are not aware of their individual assets and they are suspicious of each other. And then uh, there are also cases in which the parents transferred all the assets to the children in order to get the old age living allowance. And finally, um, the uh, trustee, and that is the uh, son, um, disappeared. Carrie Lam, in the past, Refused universal retirement protection, and uh, she is a public officer of high caliber. And uh, she even criticized uh, Professor Nelson Chow, who took the lead in the consultancy study. She criticized Professor Chow for not understanding public finance and the fiscal policy of the government. She even said that if we have universal retirement protection, it will be unfair to the young people. And some young people actually believe what she said. And um, for uh, her to understand public policies so thoroughly, last year she said that she has reservations uh, in uh, dishing out money to um, elderly people regardless of their how well off they are. I have reservations about this description. We cannot say that uh, by scrapping the income asset limit, it will be regarded as dishing out money indiscriminately. Because now we have a number of policies not subject to any means test. Education is one example. So when some members oppose the universal retirement protection and talk about uh, elderly people having a number of flats and uh, going on traveling all the time, it's pointless. Let's say if we have an income asset limit of $5 million, excluding the live-in property, does it mean that you're going to support universal retirement protection? Of course not. In the consultation exercise, the government uh, considered that uh, for the $80,000 income asset limit, it could be regarded as, uh, as uh, one of the uh, proposals and uh, the community should consider how we can enhance one of the retirement pillars. We all understand that uh, Carrie Lam doesn't believe in universal retirement protection. So um, it is pointless to uh, pursue this, but I find it really disheartening because yesterday we had a group of elderly people uh, staging a protest outside LegCo and they were supposed to um, submit this letter to Carrie Lam. Carrie Lam did not accept this letter from this group of elderly people. The, the, this, this, these elderly people woke up at five in order to come to the complex. And what they want is not something for themselves only. They are thinking for the future generations. They said that assurance should be given to future generations because by the time it is implemented, they might have passed away. And yet the, the chief executive didn't even receive the letters. Well, the people power is of the view that instead of um, continuing with this uh, bicker bickering, in the short term, we should increase the amount to 3000 or $3,500 for the old age living allowance, and we should also scrap the means test. Old age allowance requirement is that um, the Hong Kong resident should be at least 70 years old and uh, having resided in Hong Kong for at least seven years, and that and it is non means tested. For all universal retirement protection proposals submitted by the uh, or discussed by the community at present, the age threshold the threshold is set at sixty five dollars with the amount of three thousand or three thousand five hundred. Um, one universal feature is that it is not means tested. And Professor Nelson Chow also agrees with the idea. Um, he said that it is quite pointless to discuss further contributions from employers. And as we understand from the capitalist uh, um, representatives here, it is pointless to further um, discuss with them. The government should instead reform the old age allowance so as to um, re increase the amount to 3000 to $3,500 as the universal pension for all. 
if we increase the OAA amount as soon as possible, we can help address imminent problems faced by elderly people. We're not talking about universal retirement protection. It's not protection as such. We're only talking about uh, making up for something to, to compensate, just to uh, help them meet their uh, living expenses. I so submit, Mr. Jeremy Tam. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Uh, it's not a new topic for uh, for us. Every year, we have been discussing the same topic in this council. Hong Kong is facing uh, Hong Kong is having an aging population by twenty forty. Uh, every one out of three people in Hong Kong would be an elderly person, and uh, pe elderly people living in poverty have continued to increase. The ratio has increased. From 27.1 percent in 2009 to 31.8 percent uh, of the total population in 2015. There is a lack of a holistic plan when it comes to universal retirement protection. According to a research on the way forward for Hong Kong retirement protection conducted by the Hong Kong University School of Social Science, The uh, retirement fund uh, to um, income ratio is um, much lower than the, that recommended by the OECD. And if we don't address the issue, intergeneration poverty will co will continue to uh, to deteriorate, and that uh, people's quality of life cannot be guaranteed. That is why we need a comprehensive retirement protection policy as soon as possible. At present, uh, there are two problems with our universal uh, our, our retirement protection system. Uh, one is the uh, MPF. It doesn't cover everybody, especially for the for housewives um, who are not earning an income or the low income earners. And the MPF um, accrued benefits cannot support one's retirement life. According to the Secretary's information note, in 2016, there a, a research report on financial challenges faced by Hong Kong households was published. And on average, the accrued benefits in uh, an MPF member's account uh, stood at uh, one hundred and forty four thousand dollars on average, and it could barely meet living expenses, not to mention paying for rent and A few days ago, I came across a case at, at the complaints office some uh, a person worked as a cleaner for fifteen years in the end, uh, the cleaner only received fifty thousand uh, dollars as a uh, the, uh, re as retirement money is it sufficient? And also, the benefits and welfare provided to the elderly at present is not sufficient. Uh, first of all, the uh, old age living allowance and the CSSA are means tested, and for CSSA, um, it it uh, it it is a label. For many elderly people, and uh, they are reluctant to apply for CSSA. A few weeks ago, a lady picking up cardboards in streets, on cotton boxes in streets, was arrested by the FVHD for selling a piece of cardboard for one dollar. Of course, eventually, um, the uh, prosecution was withdrawn. But what she said was, I have dignity. I'd rather uh, pick up carton boxes in the street than applying for CSSA. And as mentioned by many members already, the fiscal reserve that we enjoy nowadays is the wealth created by the last generation. For these elderly people earning meager income, they, for the sake of uh, uh, their dignity, they are reluctant in applying for CSSA. They'd rather pick up um, 
cardboard, cardboards and cotton boxes in the streets. I respect them, but does it mean that the government can just uh, sit on their hands? I don't think we agree. Coming back to the research report I mentioned, for a retired couple, the household expenses ranges from $6,000 to $38,000. As for the CCPI, Comprehensive Consumer Price Index, for many years it continues to be on the rise. If there aren't sufficient savings for retirees, how can we ask Hong Kong people to uh, live on the meagre 08A? Because because for the higher rate old age allowance, this is the only non means tested subsidy for the elderly people. Um, uh, and for elderly people above the age of 70, they get $1,325 a month. Now, according to Professor Chow, we should consider the comprehensive need of the elderly. Um, we want elderly people to have sufficient money to cover their living expenses, and we also want to give uh, elderly people a sense of security. And, uh, and um, according to the professor, universal, reti re universal retirement protection, uh, under his uh, suggestion, can allow each elderly person above the age of 65 to have $3,500 a month. And uh, according to th that scheme, um, applicants will, can apply on a voluntary basis. Those who do not need the subsidy c can decide not to apply. And we can also ensure that uh, those who do not need the retirement protection will not be uh, given the subsidy in, uh, indiscriminately. Well, uh, as for the government's attitude, on the one hand, the government says that uh, this is uh, too much, a uh, long-term commitment. On the other hand, the government dishes out money for white elephant projects. What about the uh, $50 billion reserved for retirement protection? The government should not demonize any retirement protection proposals. The government should adopt the scholar's proposal. Do Dr. Pierre Chan. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I thank Mr. Leung Kok Kong for moving the motion on establishing a universal retirement protection system uh, and also amendments uh, to uh, abolish the offsetting mechanism. Well, the administration talk about universal retirement protection, but they only stay on the a consultation stage. Mrs. Lam at that time was the CS4A commissioned Professor Nelson Chow to conduct a feasibility study on universal retirement protection. And at that time, um, the professor's research findings is not in favor of the administration. So Mrs. Mrs. Lam said that um, it is not correct, and Professor Chow realized that um, the administration's intent is not to have the universal retirement protection, not really to look at the feasibility of a universal retirement protection. Actually, back in 1999, there was another uh, report. It was an academic re research, and it's estimated uh, the amount to be spent before 2016. It's very clearly stated in this report, which is the Harvard report. In the end, the administration did not adopt the Harvard report because uh, they did not like the findings because of money. So that is the same. When they when the administration carry out uh, um, surveys about of projections uh, to of uh, ten years, fifteen years, you only have to look at how they treat past researchers. CY Leung's government uh, said in no uncertain terms that there will be universal retirement protection. However, um, Mrs. Carrie Lam pronounced the death of universal retirement protection not long afterwards. No one knows what happened. Well, surely it is not uh, uh, implementation 
of uh, universal retirement protection, according to C.Y. Leung's manifesto. Professor Chow is on the is a conservative scholar, if you if you can call him that. He made a proposal which is a demogram proposal similar to universal retirement protection because he genuinely cares about uh, poor elderly people and he would like to improve their standard of living compared to our officials or uh, some legislators you can see that he is his sincerity is very different in the end the administration decided uh, to use the existing approach they keep um, means testers, um, elderly CSSA and OALA, they only propose to add an additional higher tier of assistant whilst excluding the universal retirement protection and the demo grant proposal proposed by Professor Chow. The latter involves non means tested schemes. It shows us how much the administration cares about our elderly citizen. A number of members have said that uh, they have dignity. They don't want to go through means test. They don't want to receive benefit when they are old. They'd rather be self-reliant. Or you can offer them 1,325 for old age allowance, which is non means tested. They will top it up with their savings to make ends meet. Professor Chow uh, said that uh, those who are not eligible or those who are reluctant to apply for CSSA amounts to tens of thousands. We have a widening wealth gap. In 2015, uh, poor elderly people, as numbered at 350,000. Every year, the administration spent tens of billions of dollars on social welfare. Health care expenditure will increase as well. Because of stigmatization, some el poor elderly people are not well taken care of and they live in poverty. They've been working all their lives, they've been making contributions to Hong Kong and that's what they get in the end. On a macro level, abject poverty will affect uh, one's health, especially elderly people. So there is a domino effect. In the end, it will increase health care expenditure. So the administration saves on universal retirement protection, but they will have to pay more on other expenditures, say, for example, health care. They will lose out more than they thought they think they can gain. Whether it's the demo grant proposal or um, the uh, universal retirement protection uh, of the scholars' a proposal, they all pro they all advocate an on means tested scheme to benefit everyone, so that uh, elderly citizens will have uh, several thousand dollars um, to enable um, an easier life. I uh, they talk about uh, three tripartite uh, contributions. Say, for example, part of the contribution from MPF. I think it's a question of whether the administration will pros will do it. I've been here for a year. I see that if the administration is determined to do something, they can. Let's look at the uh, finance committee when it comes to overrun the infrastructure projects or those uh, that involve a significant sum, sum. If they want to do it, uh, they would make sure that it happens. The medical registration amendment ordinance. This will um, damage the relations between uh, pa patients and doctors. However, they want to do it, so they will make sure it happens. So I think it's a matter of whether they want to do it, not whether they can do it. At the end of 2015, Mrs. Carrie Lam uh, rejected Professor Chow's report. And uh, when she was uh, electioneering, she uploaded a video clip. I do hope that she will genuinely listen to us. Mr. Jonathan 